Hello and welcome to today's Christmas special. Um, nothing particularly special about it other than the fact that I'm sat here wearing my Christmas hat and full of Christmas cheer. Um, I did say that I wasn't going to bring out a video on Christmas Day. Uh, that's kind of not true as you can tell because this video exists. So <clears throat> I kind of just thought, you know, I'll do it anyway. Who cares? I'm just going to put these things up right there we go so as you can see we've got Orcus also known as Chris um, and Doubt in red Orcus in green I think I'm just gonna call him Chris from now on um, they're also the arguably best players of AoE of all time um, so this is gonna be quite a hectic game even though I'm feeling pretty relaxed uh, sat here and I'm not planning on getting too worked up about this one got a drink a mug of mocha to keep me going as well um, also, you may have noticed this is a Land Nomad, and Land Nomad is quite an interesting map. For the fact that everything is spread out from the very start, as you can see, um, Orcus had to build his town centre from scratch, and he started over here, um, and all his villages were a bit spread out to begin with. And also his map exploration is kind of weird. Looking at Doubt then, well Doubt, Doubt had a villager all the way up here for a start, and he's already built a dock and got a boat out on the water. Now, it's very important in Land no Nomad and Nomad to get your town centre up as fast as possible. Of course, the longer your town centre is building, um, the longer your opponent's town centre could be producing video uh, videos, producing villagers and getting an advantage. At the moment, the scores are pretty neck and neck. You can get closer than that. There's only two difference between them. Um, and both players are beginning their game Pardon me, they are quite close together actually on the map, and Land Nomad is a great map actually as well, purely because it's got a lot of water, it's got a lot of resources available, um, which means that there's not so much competition for resources, but if you are able to exclude resources from your opponent, then you're going to be in a good position. As we can see then, all the gold is kind of to the north of the map, as well as quite a lot of sheep as well, there are a hell of a lot of sheep on this map and both players are actually exploring with their sheep at the moment purely for that reason quite a few boar as well and no doubt both of them will be collecting boar where possible yeah excuse me for the random pauses that's just because I've had way too much to eat today and uh, there is a lot of gas to be getting out <laughs> so yeah um, while the game is underway then I'll just uh, tell you what I got for Christmas why not um, Lots of chocolate. I think that was the main thing that I got for Christmas. Chocolate. Um, chocolate. Terry's chocolate oranges. Shortbreads. Chocolate boxes. Everything you could want. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have enough chocolate to last me till February, no doubt. No doubt, indeed. And that's uh, exactly who we're spectating right now. As you can see, it's gathering a lot of wood here. And that's purely just to get out plenty of fishing boats. And I think he's got another docks. Oh, no, it's not yet. But can imagine he'll have another dock soon. Um, he's going purely into wood at the moment and obviously having his dock all the way over here he's going to assume that um, there's not going to be any harassment to that until the feudal age. Excuse me again. <laughs> so doubt then at the moment in the lead score wise he has a few more population than Chris and that's probably due to the fact that he's got a lot of boats out on the water and also choose the fact that his town centre was up first and it's been pumping out villagers pretty much non-stop from the start of the game probably gonna make a little wall off here actually um, he's got a couple of houses there already and as we can see Chris has actually plonked a house down there so he knows that Chris is fairly nearby now I'm gonna say this a bit early on it's a pretty hectic game with Land Nomad you're spreading out across the map pretty much insanely um, as you can see doubts creating a mill or a house up here they've just housed all around the map uh, just exploring and housing as they go um, and there's gonna be a lot of spread there is always a lot of spread um, on these maps because obviously the resources are usually quite far apart and it's quite a small map as well so there's a lot of angles to attack and a lot of places that could be left exposed Another dock down here for Doubt then, and no doubt with all these fishing ships on the water, he's going to be able to reach 500 food fairly quickly. 
Um, as of yet, no farms or anything like that. He's already gathering gold quite early on. Um, and yeah. My game's going a bit spazzy, so I actually hope it's not going to be affecting the recording. Um, also, someone said about noise volume. Um, I turned the game volume down as much as I could, but it's still fairly loud, unfortunately. So there's not a lot I can do about that, because the in-game settings don't seem to affect it very much. Anyway, as we saw then, Chris um, went to the feudal age first. He's already feudal, and um, Doubt is only advancing now as I speak. So, Doubt is a little bit behind um, of advancing there, but he's also... Um, in a nice position, he's got a lot of a lot more units out. Orcus on 32 population, Doubt on 39, which means he's obviously got a stronger economy. On the other hand, though, Orcus, uh, Chris, has already got galleys out on the water. He's got quite a few out actually, he's been pumping them out for a little while, and that means that Doubt's gonna lose a lot of fishing ships. Bear in mind now that Orcus, or Chris, sorry, has already got at least five galleys on the water. Which is going to mean that Doubt is not going to be able to get any galleys up here at all. Especially due to the fact that he can't make another dock up here now because his villages are so far away. He's got four docks down here now though. Um, he's obviously responding to that in the only way he can. By building docks down here and trying to get out as many galleys as he can as, as many galleys as he can to combat Orcus. But Chris, however, um, taking out pretty much all of Doubt's boats there. And that's definitely put him in the lead, as you can see by the score. Log of War on, and we can see that Doubt has ex already explored a lot of the map. Um, although he went to Feudal Age pretty late, um, he's going to be able to advance to Castle fairly soon, no doubt. That's if he's not harassed by Orcus. Uh, Chris, however, I need to stop saying Orcus, it's Chris, it's Chris. Chris, though, nope. archery range, barracks, and that means he's going to be going pressure. And that's a good move to make. Outpost there for a little bit of scouting uh, or map visibility. But also, interestingly enough, blacksmith and houses up here as well as an outpost. He's spreading out as much as he can, um, which kind of works and it kind of doesn't, but that's his method at the moment. Okay, so now Doubt with galleys on the water, and it looks like Orm Chris is going to be hard pressed to deal with that. He's kind of split his navy up, and that means he's going to lose a few of his galleys. Still with a score lead though, and no doubt going to stay that way until Doubt can take out Orcus's ships. Uh, Chris's ships. I need. I need to say Chris, not not Orcus. Bear with me while I have a sip of my mocha. There we go. Christmas special, ladies and gentlemen. Listening to me sip on my mocha. Lovely. <laughs> So Orcus now, uh, Chris even, oh I need to stop myself, Chris is uh, forced away from that little mining camp there due to those boats and a little scuffle on the water, looks like Doubt can win this, he's got more ships and he's also had the first shot into Chris's boats. While this is happening though, we've got a few archers down here from Chris and What's Chris going to do with these archers? No doubt try and harass where he can. Doubt quick to wall off there. He doesn't want that gold pile getting harassed. That's his only gold income at the moment. He wouldn't want to lose that now. Both of them still in the feudal age. Chris with a few archers in Doubt's base. Doubt with many woodcutters actually. Um, no doubt he's going to be looking to um, get as many town centres out etc as he can when he gets to the castle age. He's also going to need that wood to create uh, military production buildings. He's only just got his first barracks up now and he's a little bit behind in that sense as he doesn't have an archery range yet. So there he is. Obviously now forced to build in a very awkward manner. Um, his villagers are fairly safe for the time being. They are being fired upon. But archers pretty weak um, at doing much damage for now. Um, and really Doubt is just managing as he can in there. As you can see as well, four lumber camps for this small area. Um, it makes sense though, uh, having a lot of lumber camps around, I'll get back to that in a second. Having a lot of lumber camps around um, means that your villagers have to travel less distance before they can bank, as it were. Now Chris is trying to take out this watchtower here, he wants to gain control of this gold. Um, understandably, he wants to force his opponent to have less gold. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to take that watchtower out though. His villagers are being attacked by Doubt's villagers, and this village has got heavy repairs on there as well. So the watchtower stays up, and unfortunately for Chris, he loses a couple of villagers. Now, over on the water, 
Chris with about five or six galleys there. Doubt thoroughly taking control here. He may not have many uh, fishing ships on the water at the moment, but he's definitely got control. He's got all of these galleys, and he's forcing Chris to lose all of his fishing boats, so that's firmly in favour of Doubt at the moment. It's good for him. Streaming down the hill, though, Doubt may have the water advantage, but at the moment Chris has definitely got the advantage on the ground, and although uh, Doubt has a few skirmishes there, Chris has definitely got more um, on the field at the moment, and he's going to be able to take them out. Interesting little area here as well, we've got two hills, um, obviously hills giving an attack and defensive bonus. So there we go. What's Doubt getting here? Another archery range, and... I need to stop that, I think it's so bad. <laughs> Another archery range there. So Doubt then, able to collect a lot of fish on the water, still another dock going up. Also explains his heavy lumber camping. Um, and, oh, here we go. So Chris is coming in now into Doubt's base with a large force there. He's definitely outnumbering those skirmishes, and he's definitely going to be able to take them out as well. Also, Doubt to quickly build a watchtower there. And, as you can see, Chris losing a few men and doubt even attacking with villagers. This is the kind of nitty gritty dirty game that we like to see because it really is all over the place, there's attacks coming in from all angles, there's buildings all over the map and both players are actually, multi I can't imagine how much multitasking they must be doing, they, their screens must be in one place, uh, more than one place at once, that's for sure. Seems like Orcus, uh, Chris, however, has managed to take control of the water again. Um, Doubt's ships are all the way over here for some reason, They're miles away from base, and that means that Chris is going to be able to take out these galleys with little problem whatsoever. He's going to be able to take out these ships as well if he gets there before Doubt comes back, although Doubt does have a galley advantage. Water control in favour of Doubt at the moment, I would say, although seeing that Chris is on the comeback on the water. More archery ranges for Doubt then, and looks like he's going to be getting quite a few skirmishes out as he has seen that Chris is mainly building archers. Sides have changed now then. Oh, maybe not. I didn't actually see that army of Chris's there. What's he got? Skirmisher, archer, army. Majoritively skirmishers, and they are having quite a nice little battle out actually on this little area. Nice two hills here, and it's really just now a case of who can get the most men out and lose the least men. It's all going to come down to micromanagement. Chris with a good little move there moving forwards. He needs to get back, however, otherwise Doubt is going to de deal considerable damage. More houses there. Houses is interesting, really. Uh, they have quite a lot of HP, so in the feudal age they take a long time to take down. And they make a nice little obstacle. Uh, they they obstacle, obstacleize everywhere. That's not even a word, but they do. Uh, they are interesting buildings. They're not all clumped together like you usually see, they are spread out, used as walls, um, and it really is a skill in Age of Empires to be able to, to really um, you know, find whatever resource you can where available, and obviously houses are a resource in this game. Building another watchtower here, that's a sensible option, if you can get that up he's going to be able to take out these archers, if he doesn't get this up he's going to lose all of his villagers, he's desperately trying to get that up. Looks like Chris might be able to take this, and that was a good move there. Chris managing to secure that area, and Doubt losing, by the looks of it, all of his gold income. He's not going to be able to afford any archers now, and that's bad. He can't afford archers, he can't afford galleys, and that means he could potentially lose water control here. Orcus then, Chris even, um, taking out lots of boats there. Going to be a limited by how many he can take because there's Doubt's army on the main beach, they say, right there. In the centre then, who's got the winning army? Well, let's have a look. They're both fairly even at the moment. However, Chris coming forwards with watchtowers, and as you see as well, watchtowers. Defensive and defensive units, uh, building even. You can garrison lots of guys inside of there, and that will allow you to have a nice little offence um, if you garrison a few in, in an offensive position. Here we go around the side then, Chris trying to catch Doubt off guard, but Doubt not having any of it, forcing Chris away. Trying to get some gold back as well, no doubt he's going to get another gold camp somewhere. He's still got this one under control, but um, if he keeps getting harassed by Chris like that, he's going to struggle. 
Doubt then, possibly making a poor move there, um, moving all his whole army out just to bring them back again. Chris now right in the centre of Doubt's base, going to be able to take out a few villagers in there, and that's a nice little position for him. Can't get too close to these watchtowers though, because that's going to happen. Garrison straight in, and he's going to lose a hell of a lot of men there. He's got a lot of, a lot of guys shooting at him. I wouldn't want to be shot at. <laughs> by that many guys, and now Doubt with a clear army lead, however he doesn't want to attack that hill, because that hill could provide problems with attacking uphill, obviously is not good. Just have another sip of my drink, and leave you to watch Doubt's glorious army. Castle Age for Doubt, Doubt in the Castle Age, immediate response from Chris to advance to the Castle Age. Maybe he was planning to do that, maybe that was his response. Um, obviously it doesn't take that long to advance, but that, that period of time where you're not advancing, it allows your opponent to get up a siege workshop. It allows your opponent to upgrade their men, it allows your opponent to gain an advantage. Get out maybe some knights, do whatever your opponent is going to do. And I really love how these guys use their economy, they've really spread out, they've got farms all over the place, they've got lumber camps all over the place, they're making the most of what they can. And here we go, so Doubt the push now. Using his elite skirmishes to push forwards. He's obviously using this to his advantage, the fact that he's got this small window to attack, he's even upgraded his archers to crossbowmen. He's timed this really well, because obviously Chris is not going to have the technology advantage at this stage. He could, however, still force Doubt back, and there we go. So Doubt is now for forced to retreat, losing most of his army, and there we go, that's what an advantage on a hill can do, uh, that's hence why, hence why people stick to hills, um, standing on top of a hill and firing down does help. So now Chris has got a small window to actually upgrade his men again, and try to combat uh, Doubt's, Doubt's improved army. I know he's those archers though, no doubt about that, and Chris really needs to lump his uh, army together more. These little skirmishes around the side, they're not really working. Small attack up here, but two watchtowers, you cannot deal with that unless you've got battering rams. Who's got battering rams? Doubt. And Doubt is now going to be able to take out these towers, there's nothing to garrison in there. The towers doing very minimal damage to these. So there we go, Orcus, uh, Chris, Horses at that battering ram, Yord into that uh, position where Doubt can bring his mangonels up. Chris is really not looking forward to this. Mangonels, excuse me. Mangonels are the ultimate weakness of any uh, any archer unit. However, Chris coming quickly in with some knights there. Even the knights need to be worried about these mangonels. They can deal with a considerable amount of damage. And that just crushing Chris's men. Chris has kind of gone all in here, but Doubt has found a different position. Um, he's wedged himself in that little gap, and he's managed to take out pretty much all of Chris's dudes there. Doubt then, with a great move, pushing forward with the mangonels, um, blocking, blocking his mangonels from being killed by the knights, and taking out the whole of Orcus's uh, army like butter. Pretty much swept them away there, and causing Chris to resign. Now what an interesting game, I do love Land Nomad, purely for the fact that not only are these amazing players to begin with, um, just the fact that how they spread out and everything is considered a resource, you know, even where you place your buildings does matter. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed that little video, I don't know how long it is, hopefully it's not too long, um, I'm going to go spend some time with my family now, and I hope you have a good Christmas, I'll see you tomorrow. Ho ho ho!